Welcome to the Sean Sean and Geek <laughs> the Sean Geek and Fast Fret podcast. Done. Well done. Okay, we're gonna use that. <laughs> So my name is Ed Roche. I'm the guitarist, band leader, and um, I guess like manager, quote unquote, of, uh, of Apollo Suns. Uh, we've been around since 2016, uh, released our first album 2017, uh, or our first EP, I should say, uh, Each Day Different Sun, uh, in spring of 17, and then went uh, promptly hit the road after that. Um, since then, we've toured... Uh, Canada several times. We've toured uh, now the U.S. Uh, we've been hitting heavily since um, everything reopened. And, uh, yeah, we're doing roughly about 130 days a year uh, throughout North America. And then, um, yeah, we've we've released three EPs. We, got, we just, on Friday, September 22nd, we released our first full-length album, Departures. And, uh, yeah, we're, I always describe us as a... Um, Psycho jazz funk band. Usually it's like seven to ten pieces. We're touring as a six piece right now. And then we're uh, lucky enough, uh, fortunate enough to have a nice network across uh, North America to pick up um, different guest players in, in different cities and just like have them sit in on shows, which is uh, really exciting. Okay. I, that, um, I was going to ask about that because I, I watched, I went down the, the YouTube rabbit hole and, and oh, watched. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, my my wife said you went missing for like a couple of days because <laughs> I was just what? watching. My wife said I was missing for a couple of days, just watching a bunch <laughs> and uh, listening and re-listening to the uh, the new album, the new release. Because uh, Karen, co- another co-host on our show, she said you got you got to hear these guys. You got to hear these guys. And I'm like, okay, okay, I, I'm in. And then Sam from Witch Police, same thing. And then uh, and yeah, I'm a convert for sure. This is good. I plan to pick up the album. Because I like owning oh. physical medium stuff. Yeah, me too. I, it's so I, nice to actually hold the things you own. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> actually not rent the stuff that you think you own. Oh, my God. Don't get me started on subscription-based models. And, oh, my God. <laughs> well, that was the part. So that was the part on the Witch Police show that really stuck to me. And that's why I, that's when I really started listening when you were talking about um, listening to things. And... And how you listen, like as you could see, we've got our super heavy yeah. duty headphones because I want to hear everything. I like, I don't know. I like hearing like every separation in the music. I like hearing, you know, if someone's like sliding on the fretboard, like I, I like to hear all of that stuff. I don't like to miss anything when I'm listening. All the, all the nuances. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff you wouldn't yeah. probably hear if you were just listening in the background versus when you really concentrating on the music. Absolutely. I remember um, one memory that comes to mind of that. I remember being like, I don't know, maybe it was like 20 or 21. I, it, was, it was in my first apartment having moved out and I set up my like stereo, my record player. And I and I remember like, man, I, I remember like getting like, <laughs> like, like pretty high uh, and uh, just lying down. And I was listening to the Doors album, um, Strange or um, Strange Days. Okay. Yeah. And I listened to that album a bunch, but for whatever reason, I never noticed the the uh, tremolo effect that Jim Morrison's voice has mm-hmm. on "Lost Little Girl," mm-hmm. and I was like, I was like, oh man, I've never noticed that before. And it's like one like things need some things need repeated listening. Absolutely. And there are just certain things that you miss when you're listening to it on shitty headphones or a laptop. Lost little girl Your lost little girl Your lost, tell me who are you 
yeah, it's it, it's interesting. Just like these little these little nuanced things that come out when you listen in a nice environment with proper equipment, but also like give it the time uh, and and like you know the repeated potential like listens of of it all to to, to notice those little things that you know, the producer, the artist puts in, into the mix. Like it, like it applies to all, all kinds of art too. Like my wife is a painter on, on the side, right? So she's working yeah. on, uh, she's a hairstylist and she's doing up new work to put on her salon walls. Right. So as she's going through, like she's, she's kind of pointing out and when she paints, she paints in layers. So she, she paints, okay. lets it dry, lets everything set in. And then she literally paints on how the layers look and how, a particular layer will catch the light at a particular angle. It's like, well, no, it can't be on the left side of the wall. It's got to be in the middle based on the way the light's going to hit it. And it's, it nuance in art is what makes art art. It's not meant to be in the background playing in a fucking elevator or, or, um, I don't know. It's not, music is not background to me. You lose a bunch of, yeah. you lose a bunch of frequencies too, depending on, on how you're listening to it, especially <clears throat> Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So Spotify is a terrible uh, sound quality, which is a shame because that's like what, like the second most like discoverable place af- after YouTube mm-hmm. is a uh, Spotify. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like yeah, when Sam and I were talking about our consumption, and I mean we have this we have this uh, discussion all the time in the band where you know we'll get down the rabbit hole of like. It informs our mixes, which is annoying because we're like, how are people going to listen mm-hmm. to this? And then I kind of just throw that aside. I'm like, I don't give a shit how other people no, are going to listen to it. How, how am I going to listen to it? Yeah. And like, and, and I'm the one who's spending tons of money and we're spending a lot of time mm-hmm. and energy and like emotional exhaustion of writing and conceptualizing and working a band. So I I'm like, well, how am I going to enjoy it? Mm-hmm. And then let's just mix it. Let, like, let's make it sound as, as good as it can. And um, I, I think we're, we're very fortunate to have a demographic though. Like, um, and, and it's crazy to see our demographic is it's like all ages, all different identities and all different, like, you know, it's, at, at a show, I can talk to like a seventy-year-old jazzer who digs it, and then I can talk to like a twenty-year-old like par- party person who's there to have a good time, and like, and it's like, oh wow, like this is, you know, this is crazy. Or people who typically wouldn't like our music are coming up and be like, well, oh, yeah, like, this is like for example, at that at that show, um, Alex, so Karen's husband, Alex, he's a metalhead, and he mm-hmm. totally dug it. So it's, for me oh, yeah. that that really informed like okay this isn't just this isn't just music like you can tell there's passion there's like you're putting something you're not just oh this sounds like a good chord no 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 this feels like a good chord <laughs> this feels like the yeah. right you know it it I don't know there's a lot of I, feeling in it and that's that's super key to good music I love converting metalheads uh, but I think my favorite was we were in uh, Oklahoma last last may and uh you know we for whatever reason we just have some fans down there and and this uh radio host on an npr station in oklahoma was like oh you got to come down this is great venue we'll take care of you and they did like it was awesome it was so much fun but we after the show we had these cowboys come up like real cowboys like real <laughs> like not the albertan wannabes like the real cowboys who came up and were like, you know, I was worried that you didn't when I saw them horns, but you guys were pretty awesome. <laughs> and then we're buying us drinks and like telling us stories, like like real, real cowboy, real so cowboy like, shit. <laughs> yeah, we were like, this is so cool, you know. Like, thank you um, for taking the time and not being scared of the horns, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think it just speaks to like like music if it's played honestly and and like with intent will hit people in like ways that they might not expect you know like if they're open to it they'll be like oh these people are playing passionately they look like they believe in it and and i've had many people be like you know i'm not really i wasn't into this style of music 
but they're like, you guys look like you're having the, so much fun upstage that it's so hard not to get into mm-hmm. it. And and then they, and then we found people that never listened to jazz or instrumental or funk music. And then, and now they're like, Oh, I love, I, I love these bands. Like, yeah. That's what we listen to, you know? Like, so I, I think it's, um, you know, kind of like, breaking down that genre barrier of like, Oh, I only listen to this type of music or this type yeah. of music. I think it's important to like blend. And I think more people are becoming open to that, like, like transcending the genre lines and then just finding out, you know, like maybe I like this type of music from this part of the world or I, or that I wouldn't have expected or going against, you know, what, be- but going against what we said earlier, th- I, I will say like, I, I'm, I'm very anti Spotify, but, our our mm-hmm. band's music's on there too, so like okay, sure. Yeah. But I will say the one the one good thing that comes out of it is is exactly what you're saying is, you know, I'm I'm into whatever I'm into Taylor Swift and I'm a Swifty blah 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 and then but then you're on Spotify and then eventually you're like oh wait what's this and it's outside of your comfort zone and then this is oh, outside yeah. and then so it's good for that because finding new music can be challenging and finding a new band can be challenging. Yeah. The discoverability on Spotify is, is high. Like the algorithm is very smart. Uh, and, and I've, I've discovered a lot of my new favorite bands that I've gone to, to see live. Um, I will say that for people who just listen on Spotify and stream, like it's important to be like, yeah, that's great, but go support the artists as well. Like, Hell go yeah. to shows, buy their merch, buy their record or their tapes or CDs or stickers and buttons, all that stuff, or like donate to their Kickstarter campaign, whatever you want. Um, and support looks like many different things. It's, it can be non-financial as well. You can tell all your friends, you yeah. can, you know, you can buy a ticket and, and then bring a bunch of friends and like help, help them like spreading, spreading the word. Cause it takes a community, but, um, but that's key though. Yeah. Like start at spot. Like I don't have a problem with people starting at Spotify, but don't stay there. Oh, yeah. he- head over to Bandcamp, and then and then discover because like for for example, like our second album is only on Bandcamp, and nice. but then what we did on our latest release, we did something that's totally marketing negative, in that <laughs> our 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 latest CD that we put out, you can only get the full CD on CD. On Bandcamp, you only get four of the 11 songs, and it's not on regular streaming. So on Bandcamp, you get four songs, but if you buy the CD from us, you're going to get 11 tracks. Yeah. and That's kind of productive, I, I know, but... <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, like when, when we tore um, our, our, our EP, our 30P uh, Relationship of Force, we put a bunch of, like, bonus songs on there and, like, some live stuff. Okay that isn't anywhere else um, and a couple unreleased songs. And, and, and I think people like dig that, especially in like the non, you know, like in the more niche or like more like genres that have more like diehard kind of like, fo- like followings. Um, yeah. We, and, and we sell tons of those CDs and uh, you can listen to the EP, but like the, the, the bonus stuff is only on the um, only on the CD and, um, you know, pe- people, I find other bands and people I talk to scoff at printing CDs, but I'm like, man, like we sell thousands, like mm-hmm. we, like we sell a lot of CDs. I mean, we tour a lot, but, um, well, let me I ask you though, pretty- let me ask you though, your CD yeah. sales, the money you've made on CD sales versus the money you made on streaming, which is higher. Oh, definitely. CD sales. <laughs> well, there you go. So you, yeah. there's the argument period done. Yeah, and I mean, like really? you know, like we're fi- we're finally getting on editorial playlists. I mean, not finally. It's not, it's not like anyone is entitled to it, but it's it's nice after so many releases to be like, oh, we're finally getting on that. So, you know, we've had songs that have cracked like a hundred thousand streams now. Nice, but even then, that, that's only like a few hundred dollars, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, Spotify. I don't know. It's it's a love hate relationship yep. for sure. Yeah, I, I understand it needs to be there, but you know, starting point. Like I said, start there and go support the yeah. band elsewhere afterwards. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you have a show coming up at the park. Uh, Goodwill. Oh, Goodwill. Sorry, uh, Goodwill. Yeah, yeah I think we, you- uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's double uh, uh, a double header uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, 
October 19th and 20th. Oh, um, I didn't see the 19th. Oh. I want to I want to make it out, I want to make it out to that because I want to yeah. buy some shit. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, we're going to have tons of t- tons of stuff. I mean, we just got like some hoodies in and some toques and all that, so new shirt designs. But uh, really looking forward to it because uh, I mean it's our like official hometown release of departures. Okay. Uh, and then on each night we have different guests sitting in with us, and and we'll be doing different sets. Oh really? Um, oh. Yeah. So w- one thing that we've gotten from touring the U.S. so much is we've come in contact with a lot of jam bands. Uh, which is sure. like some of them are like, oh man, this is like it's a lot of soloing, but then there are some that are just like so so good and really groovy and like do it tastefully. But um, what what one thing that it's like kind of pushed us to do is like not doing the same set every night. So even if we're doing like uh, the same songs, they'll go different places, and we'll 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 add in like popular melodies into the songs oh, at yeah. certain places and just like do little jams on those and um yeah it's interesting what 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 creeps in there uh you know like um on any given night like uh rapper's delight will be in there with the <laughs> ghostbusters theme into why can't we be friends oh into man. into like a maroon five groove that we're like what 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 the hell is happening here we don't even listen to this <laughs> but it's like we, we kind of play this game of like whatever we hear on the radio that day at any given time we'll like we'll we'll try to add it in, into the set list just to be like oh we heard this song in the store yeah but how do you do so that like, now how, how like how what is that I, I need to understand that process so how are you going from listening to it on the radio to implementing in the set like what discuss no, how does um, the band discuss this sometimes we'll discuss it pre-show uh where we'll be like hey like you know like oh we heard this song and we'll hear like a uh, you know, um, one time I heard, uh, what, what, what is it? The Nelly Furtado song, um, uh, Promiscuous Girl or oh, something like okay. that. Yeah. The, the melody's like, da, 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 yeah. da, da, So I heard that. And then in one of my solos, I just started playing that riff <laughs> and then the, um, and then like quoting the melody. And then the horn player started doing it as a background. Yep. And then we switched the entire song. To like that groove and we put like a, a funky kind of like dancier like like mid-tempo disco groove underneath it and then we just kind of went into that and and then we when we were done with it we went back into the the original song um, oh my god that's that's fun wow there, there was yeah. um it definitely keeps you on your toes uh, the, uh and sometimes it crashes and burns and other times <laughs> it's like really great but you if, pe- if people <laughs> get it though if people get it like oh wait but that's um oh, yeah. that's um oh my god you know Oh yeah, like uh, you know, like if if we do, why can't we be friends? We'll like we'll like play the song, and then it'll turn into like a melody, and then we'll all quote that melody, and then we'll get the entire audience to sing like, why can't we be oh, friends? Uh, which is awesome. sometimes we'll end the shows like that on the road. Yeah, and and I think it's a great way to like send people off with like a really nice like like just treat everyone out there like you're like they're your friend. Yeah, you know, but they were part like, of the just, show too. Yeah, they're, they're being yeah, part of the show. Know, absolutely. Have you seen whose line is it? Mm-hmm. The show. Now, yeah. Now, because you guys are now, I don't know if this is off the cuff or you guys kind of practice this beforehand. But if you had a screen behind you with just a randomizer for songs, <laughs> and then someone hit it, and then you guys are just doing a groove, and you look up and go, "Oh, okay." So then you start <laughs> implementing whatever the song is that's up there, like on the spot. Holy shit! That'd be That'd be amazing. I feel like we would have to put like six songs and, and it's pick like, one like that, that we know already. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I'll have to just be like, oh man. Uh, uh, oh, uh, what, one time we were in, um, we were playing uh, Nantucket Island at like this really fancy brewery and everyone's like fucking loaded. Like it's Nantucket Island, you yeah. know, like in Massachusetts. So um, we we're playing like, um, uh, what is it? Memorial Day weekend, so it's like uh, you know one of the yeah. big U.S. holidays. Um, but uh, you know this this guy was just yelling "Free Bird" at us. Of course, <laughs> you know there's Tom oh, Trump. Yeah. There was this man from Nantucket. So we, so we said into the mic. <laughs> so we said into the mic. Hey man, we'll learn it during set break. 
if you give us, I, I think I said three hundred dollars. I was like, if you pay us three hundred dollars right now, if you tip us three hundred bucks, we'll learn it. And then he did. So oh my we god! Went back. Oh no! <laughs> we went to the stage and we pulled up a voice recording, or, or not, not a voice recording. We pulled up the recording of Freebird and we like learned the chords and the melody there. And then we just played an instrumental version of yeah. Freebird and then like jammed on it for like ten minutes and then went back into the original like the original chords. Uh, and then that guy just loved it. Like he was like, "Oh my god, they're doing it!" <laughs> you know. And now he's so, a follower of your band permanently. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like, I, I I think we're in a really good spot because we're not like tied down with like a vocalist potentially, and and like that we can adapt our sets very quickly. And I mean, yeah. like, and of course you can do that with a vocalist. Like, there's a lot of great vocalists, but it's just nice that like. You know, or we have guests up, like people, there'll be like a freestyle rapper in the audience and he'll come out to us like, hey, can I like, 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 you know, like, like do a verse over <laughs> one of your grooves? And we're like, yeah, okay, like, come on up. And like, like, what key do you want? And then we'll just make something up on the spot. Oh, yeah. And, and, and then just go into one of our songs. And, and, and then, you know, it's stuff like that, that is, you know, it's, it's very off the cuff and it's a little dangerous which i love because it keeps you listening mm -hmm. and it keeps you like on your feet and it makes it a little bit more special like, especially if it's a local and, and all his buds are there or yeah. all their buds are there i think i was part they, of yeah the, the, yeah they're, they're like oh this this is awesome and then and then all their friends are like man like i can't believe you know we, we've come up and gotten so much goodwill from from different communities and uh locals because we're like yeah like come on up you know um on the last tour, we were in Invermere, BC, and um, and this and this fella who works the ski hills um, on the off season uh, and works at the resort was was just like he brought his friends down. He saw us on online through like a Facebook ad, and he brought like ten people. And he's a drummer, and he kind of, he came up and we were hanging out, and he just asked if he could sit in and like jam jam with us. So so we had him come in on, on a song, and <laughs> and uh, and then all you know he bought. After that, he's a fan. He bought a bunch of merch. His friends bought merch, and you know, and 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 we saw it. Now we see them all following us, and 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 all the things oh, on social media. So, so rewarding, you know. It, it, yeah, it, it it's like ways to like. Uh, it's it's like this guy I follow is uh, is always saying like he, you know he's like one of the social media marketing fellas like who works in music he's like you know like creating legacy with your fans bringing them up being making them a part of yep you know like like and like the audience isn't just a spectator they are absolutely a part of the show hell yeah and and we always like drive that message home like you know we can't do what we do without the audience so they're just as much a part of all of this as we are so you know yeah be, be, because it's a community effort we can't we can't support what we're doing with, with without everyone else involved, and you know, to to get a band even to this point is crazy. You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. it, the odds are not in your favor no. whatsoever. No, as musicians, I can. Uh, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, unless I, you got rich parents or you know s some ties, it's 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 you got to work it. You know, we're lucky enough in Canada to have the grant system. Which is very supportive, but it, but in the U.S., like it's it's all them generally, or they have private funders and they have different financial dynamics with them. But but even those can be very predatory, apart from the record yeah, I, label. Yeah, I bet they um, would be. I can't see it being as good as here in Canada. I don't know. They, we're lucky with the grants and stuff. Like it really makes yeah. a massive difference. And honestly, I think Canadian music might be better than American music anyway, because I think. There's a lot more people that can go ahead and try and make music. It's easier to just go ahead and make music and try stuff. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm a big I'm a big Winnipeg music fan. Like Yeah, oh yeah. Like I think it's so good here. Winni yeah, and like Winnipeg, uh you know, generally when people find out we're from Winnipeg, even like in all parts of the US uh, they're like, man, like, what do you guys put in the water up there? Because you know, like, they know Brothers Landreth, yep. they know Ariel Posen, and then they'll know like Neil Young and the Guess Who yeah, and the a bunch is. of other bands. And and they're like, man, like, uh, but it, I, I'm always like, well, you know, you you either play hockey or you play music because it's 
you know, five, six months out of the year, it's just cold and, you know, not much to do. But then, but in, in the summertime, there's tons of like outdoor events and, um, yeah. Um, and, 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 and like all the other stuff and like all the jams and, and just like lots of opportunities to play and learn, you know? Yep. Definitely. Yeah. yeah I have a songwriting question. Mm-hmm. So, I, I like watching all these videos that I did and I'm seeing like, there's some kind of regulars in the band, right? Who are the, yeah. re- like, so when you're coming up, like, I'm assuming you're the one coming up with the, the general idea of a song and, and, and bringing it in and then you're working it out or how does, how does that process work? Do you bounce it off like um, one of the other guys and then germinate it yeah, from there? The first couple EPs was a little less collaborative. Um, and it was a lot of me and the, original bass player and and then when anatole rennie aaron and bartell joined the band uh they were really great they are really great at like arranging horns and and like kind of making charts for that so uh for departures the new stuff it's like there are definitely like some of them are my songs where like i wrote a lot of the melodies and some of the chords and had more ideas on like the arrangement and form but something like um, Fonksy off the new album is like Anatole Rennie, you know, like he or uh, sorry, uh, they wrote um, all that. They wrote all like the chords, the uh, all the melodies, and then um, Anatole brought it to the band. And oh. then we would just uh, jam on it and be like, you know what, like, let's let's take out this melody and like let's put it here and like and then we, we did some work on it and everyone we call it. um what we do is uh, we have like <clears throat> the main songwriter or songwriters uh, for, so they have uh, like the main songwriter or main songwriters of each song. And then we have what we call uh, in the room points. So generally if you're in the room during the writing process, you're, you're, you're giving input, even if it's on little minor things like, Oh, like let's let like this phrase of the melody have the three these notes be long held notes and then the other notes are like staccato or whatever yeah or just little things like articulation and dynamics so we kind of i don't know i always try to like give people their credit where it's due like yeah if you were in the room and all the writing sessions you were contributing you might not have written all the melodies or like the um, you know the harmonic information like chords and like horn melodies and all that um, and then there are songs that are way more like collaborative, um, that, that we have. So like, which ones, like which ones yeah, off the it, new one would be co- like truly like collaborative with the whole group. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. trying to see if I can figure out which ones I think would be, would be those ones. Um, uh, triptych, the 11th song on okay. the album, yep. uh, right before the closer was very like. Aaron and I wrote a lot of those melodies. Anatole came up with like a lot of the chords. Bryn, the bass player, worked a lot on like the a couple of the different bass lines on it. Like we didn't tell Bryn what to play. Like obviously the chord movement informs what you're gonna do, but yeah, but where um, you go with it. Like, yeah. yeah. And then um and then Glenn, the drummer on the album, had some ideas of like drum uh, production, like and like going to like the sound in, in the middle of the song, there's like an 808 kind of like Dilla esque like drum sample beat that yeah yeah that that goes in there, and that was like Glenn's contribution. So.
uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. What else? Um, Hard Time was kind of collaborative. Okay, I, I, so, like, I just I listened to that hard. before I came over to my brother's house. That was the last song I was listening to. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so I wrote a couple of those melodies like the first couple of days of lockdown, like back in 2020, um, which is why it's called Hard Time. Uh, mm-hmm. But it was originally called Quarantine. Um, but we didn't want to reference the pandemic so heavy, heavy handedly. I just want to kind of forget about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, um, stuff, stuff like that. Like, so it's generally, there's like a leader of of the song, like someone who will come in with like the main ideas, but then it becomes very collaborative of like, and we, um, yeah, we, we, we try to write. I don't know if democratically is the right word or diplomatically, but it's like, I don't know. Someone will take the lead, but then we all kind of be like, well, what if we shorten this uh, section or we um, or make it longer? Or how about this counter melody or this top line or something like that, you know? Uh, and things generally get a lot better when everyone is working on it, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Agreed. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought the Beatles stuff... I. Like I love all the Beatles solo stuff generally, but they were I thought they were way better uh, like together. Yeah. But um, you know. Well, but, like even like know, I know like Ringo think. like for example with the Beatles, like sometimes I think Ringo doesn't get <laughs> enough credit. But oh, he's I, a great drummer. But, he, but he's a great, great but, he, but he's also a great writer because when you see like yeah. I don't know if you saw the Let It Be uh yeah, totally. the seventeen hour <laughs> documentary yeah. thing. But there's points in it where he's coming in and he's actually he's shaping the song and it's like if he hadn't mm-hmm. shaped that song this song would have been good not great like yeah. I, I don't know like it i know drummers a lot of times don't get credit in songwriting me being a drummer you know it happens yeah. all the time right but at the same time like if they hadn't have put their two cents in that song would yeah. have would have been missing something and and that that's what we kind of call like the the in the room yeah stuff and and it and it could like could add up to uh to a few points in each song mm-hmm. so yeah yeah that's kind of like how we make sure that everyone gets their due because it's like even if some even if like say the drummer is only adding like hey how about if we instead of having like a full bar of just beat. Why don't we add shots on like, on like the 16th notes and that propels into the next section. To me, that's a becoming an integral part of the song then, you know, like, Oh, you're adding to like the, uh, the, the, like the oomph of the song, you know? And it's like, yeah, I I find there's like a lot of good songs, but, but they miss it in the details. Yeah. So we're, so we're definitely like, we, we kind of like look at each song to be like, like what are some details and like magic bits? Once you get the chords and the structure and the form and the, uh, and then like the melodies and, and harmonies figured out, what about, Oh, like what if we make this section kind of swung or what if we do this? Or like, what if, or what if this section is just a bar of three and not a bar of four? And then we hit, there or you know like little details like that those details are sprinkled all over our music oh i can hear it so you have to pay attention you know like you know people can't just pick up the music and play it generally like there are little a lot of little minute details that you know you just gotta be aware of that's why i was asking the question because i'm like okay wait a minute what's what what's the bass player doing here well like what why why is he doing that it sounds so good and it adds so much to the song and then the um, now I'm not a big horn guy, but um, I was really, really enjoying what the horn what the horn section is doing because they're not just all playing together; they all have their oh, individual yeah. bits, and the um, the way the horns are broken out, where like two of them are are doing this ascending thing, and then two more might be doing this kind of like middle ground thing, kind of maintaining the melody. Mm-hmm. And then the, the other person is, is kind of doing a solo or something like, holy shit, that that's, that's horn. That's why I've never liked horn because they don't horn sections. Don't always do that, but you guys are doing that. You're, 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 you're putting them together and then you're separating them and everyone's getting their, their, their turn, but it's, but it's not taking away from the song. It's not, um, I don't know. It's, 
it, it's good horn. It's really good horn. And I'm like, if if all horn was like this, I'm in. Yeah, I, yeah, and that's something that we were like trying to balance of like having those moments where you got like the main melody, maybe on guitar and trumpet. Then you've got a counter melody. Yeah. Or horn pads and like the trombone and Barry. And then you might have like the tenor doing something entirely different. And then it's like, okay, where to hit, where to do that? And then where to have everyone just hitting unison line yeah. so that you have the unison line of like the whole horn section playing the exact same thing with the guitar, even. And, and then that kind of like really beats in. The, uh, the the melody and then when it comes back we split off you know? yeah so someone's still doing the melody but then you have these counter lines or like top lines doing something that's like still supportive of the main melody yep. but is adding like a different or we're or we're adding different harmonies to the main melody on on the second pass through so uh writing the album was a lot of that like we would do demos and then it's like okay what can we do with these is the song done or do we want to add like a top line in this section? Because like, you know, or what makes this course kind of different from the last course of the song or the last head. And, you know, we, we don't, I never wanted it to be like a, a like a typical jazz band. We'll do like the head soloist head. Yeah. Soloist. Yeah. And I was yeah. Like, no, that's kind of boring. You know, like I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Writing like, we write pop song structures, you know, if anyone's paying attention, there's like verses and courses and yeah. bridges and pre-courses and breakdowns. And um, we're just instrumental, you know, Yeah. people think our songs are super out there or like, like form wise. And some of them are, but it's like, a lot of it is like, you know, A, B, A, B, C, D, A, yep. B, you know, like, you know, like yeah. you, were, you were saying nothing crazy. You were saying, like you say, in Canada, it's 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 you know it's cold half the year. So you're either playing hockey, you're playing playing uh, as a musician. Um, now, growing up prior to high school, when you get into music, uh, and then once you get to high school and you start, you know, p- playing with other people, like how did you, how did you start? Because I mean, not there's not very many bands out there who have have horns and stuff in them. Because we didn't we didn't have a, a band thing at school oh god no we didn't so know where we grew up we didn't even have that option even if there were whether are there instruments to come yeah. in so so how did you actually start like did did you hear something and go oh i'm listening to chicago and it's like wow i just love this type of music with the horn section and, and the arrangements and everything how, how did how did you kind of get into it uh like like with horns uh, um yeah i mean this is the first band that i've i've like ran that had horns um but we, uh, but we, we had worked like in my previous bands. We had worked with horns like here and there. Like we would have like a guest come yeah. in and, and and play some stuff. But um, yeah, I think um, I don't know. It uh, like they just seemed very powerful to me. Like just like a full horn section has such a presence, you know. Like it really, it really to me added, and especially like um. So, so kind of like what happened, uh, just to like give you some context for the band. Uh, I was playing in uh, like this psychedelic prog, prog rock band. Like we love like the Mars Volta and like okay. stuff like that. So we were like kind of going after that, like, like progier, heavier stuff. Um, but then that band broke up, but we still had a bunch of shows um, to play. So the bass player, drummer, and I um, just – instead of canceling the shows, we just did those shows uh, instrumentally and, and, and just like rehear- and didn't rehearse. We just improvised all the shows. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, it, and it, could, oh. it could sound like it could be like more rocky or more funky or more jazzy. It could be more post-rocky or heavier and or more spatial. And, and for each show, we would have different guests come up from just local bands that we liked um, and, and friends that we had. So some, some shows would have like three horns another show would be a four piece with an extra percussionist or uh, a couple shows we had a a flute player and then um it was was stuff like that um but i really liked the response we were getting from that like uh was way better than anything else i'd done like the crowd was enthusiastic so so we were like you know uh dave the original 
bass player and I sat down and we're like, well, why don't we like try doing this instrumental thing? But instead of jamming every show or improvising most of it, why don't we just like actually write stuff? And then we wanted like horns immediately. Um, but the original, um, the original Paul Sound shows were just four piece shows. Um, so keys, drums, guitar, and bass. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But it's so uh, prominent. Yeah, the no, horns I, are so prominent now. Oh yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, the songs did not have that. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, they didn't have that. And, uh, but yeah, so after that first year, we got a tenor sax and a trumpet player and then a percussionist. And then we just started adding on. And uh, uh, when we're at home, usually we're a four piece horn section and percussion, but um, it, it's just fun writing with horns. Um, it's a different. It's a different texture than guitar or keys. Uh, each horn kind of has its own voice as well, and like, and you solo differently on it, and mm -hmm. you phrase things differently. So um, it just, yeah, it, it kind of became like, I don't know. I didn't listen to a lot of horn bands before having Apollo Suns. Well, you know, like I'd listen to Snarky Puppy and you know s some jazz stuff, but like. You know, I wasn't I wasn't listening to Chicago. I I didn't listen to Chicago until <laughs> way later. That's interesting. Uh, I was listening to Yeah. No, no, totally. People are like, Oh, you sound like Chicago. I'm like, I, I maybe and, and now I love Chicago, but like you know, or like Blood, Sweat and Tears yeah. or all these or like, or like all these great bands that I'm like, Oh, I never listened to. I was listening to like King Crimson and a lot of Frank Zappa and like uh you know, Weather Report and Mahavishnu Orchestra oh, and wow, like nice. tons of like, you know, like Beatles and Stones and Zeppelin and, and, uh, and you know, and, and, and all the classics and like Jeff Beck and shit. Like, and um, so, uh, you know, like a lot of the jazz fusion stuff that had horns in it, but not like the horns that we have, you know, the big four piece yeah. spread out, you know, like, um, so I don't know. I, I think that's what kind of, works in our favor as well with me being not really a traditionalist had i been listening to all those bands prior to starting yeah yeah sons, it might sound way more like those bands whereas now i feel like we've kind of like honed in on something that's a little bit i don't know i don't think any anything is really truly unique like we're all just an amalgamation of of just like past experiences or influences and all that. But I feel like, cause we all come from a different background and we all listen to tons of different styles of music that it has allowed us to not sound, sound like any one of those influences. And now we sound like ourselves, like some songs have a more progier feel or, or, uh, you know, or have a more like dancier funk feel or have a more Afrobeat feel or yeah. have a more like even pop form or a rock or a psychedelic or, you know, um, yeah. So I think that's worked to our advantage of my um, uh, miseducation, we'll say. <laughs> miseducation, <laughs> I like that. But, but you know, it's true. Like you, I, I do like what you said about going back to Chicago after and not – knowing them up front like so when when todd and i have been playing in bands for forever and then you know i i grew up on like as a drummer i grew up on bonham and 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 you know oh, that, yeah. yeah peter chris and that kind of stuff right but then you hit you hit a certain point where you're like you, you find something else so i discovered james brown and then i discovered uh bob marley and then i discovered um nat king cole like old nat king cole and then i go back mm -hmm. And it's like, it's stuff that you heard maybe growing up a little bit in the background from your mom or dad, but you, you're like, oh, that's, I don't like that stuff. But then when you come back and you can hear the layering of, of how that music was put together and you really listen to the oh, drummer yeah. or, or like the horn section and, and a James Brown song is like, holy shit, that is awesome. Oh, yeah. But it's oh, kind of cool absolutely. to come back to it after and then incorporating it after once you have a, a, a bit, bit more education, I guess. Yeah, because it's like you're incorporating the elements of it, but you're not ripping it off, or you're not yeah. sounding like it. Yeah, because you understand it more through like, like more lived context of like, oh, like you can appreciate it in different ways without like sounding like a mimic of it. Which yeah. is, um, yeah, 
You can have a style yeah. too. I mean, you could have one person in the band and that'll change the whole band. Like just, just their <laughs> influence into the sound. Like, cause they, you know, like, like with, with Dome, like I, I'm more of like an eighties rock type thing where there, that was more of a genty type of whatever. Yeah. So I just kind of put my thing in it, which kind of changed a little bit, but you could have other people like when you're saying you're, you're, you have special guests that come and I'm sure when they come in, that just adds another flavor to, to the band oh, yeah. and changes the way you guys play probably. Yeah, like we're um, on on the Thursday night in Winnipeg, uh, we're having um, Lloyd Peterson, who runs Paintbox Studios, but uh, he's been all over Apollo Sun's history. Like uh, we worked with him on the first album, and he's worked on every one of our albums. But um, uh, he plays beautiful lap steel guitar. Like he's oh, a great guitarist and singer, yes. but he plays lap steel so well. So we're gonna have him sit in on three or four songs on Thursday. Then he's going to join us Friday as well on different songs. Uh, but uh, we, we, we did um, in June, we did jazz fest and we played dark side of the moon in its entirety. What? Um, really? We, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Uh, pack, like packed each night. The crowd was in. Oh yeah. It. But um, yeah, we played dark side. Then we would jam on it and like add, add little things into the songs. But we had Lloyd play lap steel. Cause there's tons of lap steel on that album uh and it was great I got it was goosebumps so just beautiful about it. and it's some, it's something that we don't normally work with uh so we're yeah so just having um lloyd join us and then on friday night we're gonna have a couple of different guitar players join us which i don't think we've ever had another guitar player in the band so we're gonna bring up uh the sassy mellows who are a local band they're they're great uh, their guitar players are going to join us um, on, on a couple songs oh, as well. Nice. And, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's it's um, those special guests, as you said, where we kind of be like, OK, they're the special guests. Let's support them. How do we lend to their strong suits to make them shine? And then yeah. for us, it's super fun because I usually learn things from the other from the special guests and we're jamming I'm like oh i i wouldn't have thought of that or that line or yep. that approach to this thing or you know or they start playing in a groove i'm like oh wow that's like that's way different than how i would have thought about that so um yeah it's super cool it's very communal and that's kind of what music is for us you know so now now you've given me a hard hard choice to make which which show i'm going to the thursday or the you friday know what? We, for, <laughs> for that we just tell people just come to both yeah, you just come to both. <laughs> I get two young kids, so um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I have uh, a five-year-old. You have a five, okay? I have a, a seven and a nine. Nice, but uh, boys, girls, two girls. But I will say, we actually had our first jam session in my studio uh, last week. Oh, oh nice. my god, Ed! It was so cool. I haven't heard it yet. Oh, yeah. No, I gotta I gotta send yeah. it to you. So I I sat in on the drums. Um, Abby sat in. Or wait, Abby sat in on the piano, and Ellie sat in on guitar. Because okay. uh, Ellie starts guitar next week. And oh nice. my god, it was and but Ellie actually wrote all the notes out and everything. Oh, cool. And she's like, okay, Daddy, you have to play this. And then Abby, like, like she's like, I don't know, she's like you. She's the band leader, right? The the, the yeah. seven year old is the band leader, if that makes any sense. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's ah, it's awesome. Yeah, I gotta send yeah, that to you. Cool. It was so cool. Yeah, Miles has just started playing piano. Okay, so we have this like app on the iPad that shows him where to play and like oh nice shows him the notes and then I'll play along with him. Like you know, if we're in C major or something like that, I'll just play C chords and then yeah. he can play all the white keys. And then I'm like, hey, like play all the white keys and, and then, and then I'll accompany you so he can hear like how melody yeah. and, and yeah, like chords together. work together. Oh, um, while you're doing it's that. It's really fun. It's so much fun watching kids learn. Cause then, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, you become more and more closed off or you think, you know, everything, the older you get mm -hmm. and watching kids learn, you're like, ah, oh, damn, I don't know shit. <laughs> but, but it's interesting. Cause they take different, they'll take a different route to get somewhere in a song. Oh. Right. And it's like, I would never have done that because I know too much now, but they're, they're just, it's fresh eyes, fresh ears. They're going mm -hmm. in that direction because they don't know they can't go in that direction. Like that's, that's the amazing totally. thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They'll have a yeah, different style different. for sure. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So it's like me. I'm used to the blues type of, you know, uh, 12 bar blues type thing. And then you get someone else that that's writing music where we're writing with Alex. And I was like, well, he went into this direction. Well, I'm glad he went into that direction. Cause I would have went into this direction, which is not even oh, close to what this sounds like, which is way better. <laughs> and there's also like so many different ways, to like, you know, a 12 bar blues, you can play that so many different ways. Yeah. And how you're phrasing it, or even like your chord choices or your voicing choices can ch- change. So like that 12, 12 bar blues sounds different depending on who's playing it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we've been going for a while here and I, I see you've got someone yeah. in the background trying to get your attention. Uh, sorry it ran so long, but this has been like oh, good. W- way too much fun. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a good conversation. So why cut it short, you know? Yeah. Um, so where can we find you? Uh, you can find Apollo Sons. We have a website, apollosons.ca. You can find us on all the streaming platforms. Uh, if you want to financially support, you can find us on Bandcamp. We have a bunch of merch on there, as well as our store on our website. Uh, you can, we have an email list you can sign up for, and we offer exclusive merch discounts there, tour dates there. Um, we're on Bands in Town for all of our tickets. Um, yeah, it's very easy to find Apollo Suns. We want to make it incredibly easy for everyone. Um, yeah, and then uh, I always say, if you like what we're doing, please tell your friends, tell everyone you know, and uh, for, for anyone listening out there, um, yeah, and come out to a show and uh, spread the word. Awesome. Perfect. Right. Right okay, cool. we'll see you next time.
listening. And we'll see you next week. And bye. bye. Have a good day. Hey, gang. Sean Geek here. And Fast Fred. And we have two storefronts. If you are a T Public fan, you can browse our inventory over at T Public, which is tpublic.com forward slash Sean Geek Podcast. Or redbubble.com slash people slash Sean Geek Podcast. You can get anything from either storefront from t shirts, stickers, phone cases, accessories of all kinds. We're talking masks, notebooks, mugs, pillows, totes, tapestries. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Everything's there. <laughs> Just go to those addresses. Also, check the show notes and help support the show. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.